One, openness. We've all heard of a guy who's stuck at a certain mental level, a childish mind in a man's body. We scorn him, but we're often forgetful that we're susceptible to the same disease, a firm unwillingness to novel perspectives. You know, the world is constantly changing. Every single second that passes by, we're discovering new insights in countless fields. Perspectives that have been useful in your journey to this day will probably turn obsolete in the years to come. And so the common man who clings to his current world view will be disdained by future generations. They will be pointing fingers at him, giggling. Oh, that guy is too stuck. We're in 2020 and he's still thinking as if he were living in the 90s. You don't want to be that guy, trust me. Rigidity, get rid of that. A humble openness to novelty is what's going to save your life. You're eager for new experiences, you are not complacent with your current level of knowledge, you make room for new ways of thinking, entertaining opposing ideas as though you're seeing the world from another's perspective. Sharpen the saw, as Stephen Covey puts it, a constant looking for ways to transcend your current view of reality. Change is inevitable, either you align yourself with it or you're left behind. Just like buying a new piece of hardware for your computer, you should also upgrade your beliefs and perspectives about how the world works, constantly updating your paradigm and endless change in perception. 2. Expansion Oftentimes we get so inspired by a certain role model in a way that we begin to close off novel sources of knowledge. We start thinking there's only so many brilliant mentors on earth. I tell you, this is the best book on social skills. You won't find anything like it. Well, guess what? The book that you cherish the most is just a bundle of compiled research, information taken from various sources and then coupled with the author's perspective. That's it. A book about a certain topic is merely one single perspective about that topic. You shouldn't be satisfied with one point of view, learn from many streams of wisdom, an insight from here, a fact from there, and then form your own opinion on the matter, overestimating what we already know, underestimating what we don't know is by far the straightest way to ignorance. Did you know that each of us has his own unique perception of reality? For example, if we both write a book about psychology, although it's the same topic, your book will turn out completely different from mine. Your approach to writing about psychology will differ from my approach, because you have your own ideas on the topic and I have my own as well. Here's another example. There are successful people who say passion is bullshit, just follow the money. But you can also find others that will tell you the opposite and are equally successful. Well, who's the right one? Should you follow money or passion? Maybe both or neither. So by varying your sources of knowledge, diversity will help you see things from different sides, different perspectives, thus access a perception that reflects the full rainbow of reality. Three, depth. I can't help but laugh at those who are too lazy to question the surface layer of things. For example, people who watch the news, they believe everything the news reporter says, even if it's absurd blabber. Those people rely only on their ears to form their beliefs. You should always dig deeper, question everything till you get to the root of it. Is it practical or merely abstract theory? Your knowledge should be based on depth and profoundness. Do not accept the superficial front of things. You will suffer the consequences of believing another person's preconceptions. It's like a teenager cheating on a math test. He's copying from his friend's paper, yet unaware that his friend has got it all wrong. Mainly your knowledge should be based on first-hand experience. Test things out for workability before converting them into beliefs. Never leave anything unquestioned. 4. See further ahead. 
proportion. The common man has his plans often up in the air. His actions are unpremeditated, and if he did plan something, it won't go further than a Friday evening drink. Instant short-term pleasure, that's what he's about. As a long-term thinker, you can discern where you are headed based on today's decisions. You are strategic with your time, none of it is frittered away. You make no room for distractions and exploit every ounce of yourself into your craft. Mentally, you see yourself as already successful. You're just not there yet because you're busy having fun riding the process. Yeah, you might bump into an issue here, a pitfall there, but you're unfazed by it. You realize how trivial it will seem in the long run. 5. Sharpness Reason this. Everyone is after power. Most of them will use cunning to further their own cause. Others will use a moral front, as Machiavelli puts it. One an innocent, another a priest. One a generous, another a righteous. Or so they say. You fall under their spell, they grab what they want without you suspecting a thing. The precept is as follows. You can't trust someone only because they said so. You have to wait for situations that will prove people's trustworthiness. You should never place your trust in words. Reason that everyone is onto their own self-interest. Sometimes not, but most of the time, yes. Some of them will try to use you, and a constant scanning of their underlying motives will ward off any maneuvers against you. In brief, choose your allies based on their actions, not words or promises. 6. Opportunism Oftentimes, opportunities surface in a form of obstacle. When I started this channel, I had like this $5 microphone. It was so bad that I was shameful of recording myself with it. My accent was off, my script writing was shitty, and I didn't know what I was doing. But I ventured anyway and made the most of what I had and the most of what I was capable of. Back in the day, this channel had zero subscribers. I didn't entertain for a second that one day, thousands Thousands of people would be eager to listen to what I have to say. Most of us are afraid to make that first jump, to be put on the spot, for we are haunted by our insecurities. We dread criticism. Oh boy, I need a new camera. I can't film myself with this shitty old camera. People will laugh at me. And so we put off countless opportunities. You gotta be able to look at yourself and say, you know what, I don't have the best voice in the world, I don't have the best equipment, but nonetheless, I'll find a way to make this work. An opportunist is the guy who recycles lack of resources into successes. I started off from nothing, and that nothingness ironically was an underlying opportunity. Shortage in resources forces you to work harder, to be creative. If you had everything you ever wanted, you'd live a tensionless, uncreative, comfortable life. You wouldn't have any incentive to go out and do shit. When there is lack, there is an underlying force that shoves you into making wonderful things happen. Some rich people are depressed as they weren't given the chance to feel impoverished, to wake up at 5 in the morning and work on your passion, grinding and sculpting something big. They weren't granted to feel certain emotions as their senses are constantly soaked in comfort. They get depressed not not because of pain, but from the lack of it. And so my fellow viewer, embrace your lack of resources. Whatever project you're reluctant about, the time to start is right now. Make the best of what you have. Don't wait for better circumstances. You already have everything you need, yourself. 7. Authority like the fearless types in history, you need to be a great leader. Now the little man in the back row will raise his hand and say, I don't need leadership, I am not a CEO. And to that I say, leadership is not only a business related skill, you need to learn how to lead your thoughts, your emotions, your relationship. People will never follow your lead if you are naive, irresponsible, fearful and compulsive. Leadership calls for discipline, self-respect, self-reliance, self-belief, fearlessness and self-direction. You are not a leader if you come up to people and say, hey guys, I don't know if this plan is going to work, but you can try it out for yourself and see what happens. That's weak. 
People will not follow someone who's wishy-washy, uncertain. They only look up to role models who seem to know what's the right thing to do when. Those who are able to handle pitfalls and come up with solutions on the go. A leader is a problem-solving machine. You won't hear a true leader say, Guys, I think, I think this is gonna work. A true leader will say, This is going to work. We're gonna make it work or die trying. That's what people reciprocate with. An empowering character. A lion. 8. Keep moving, calculated momentum. We waste ample time thinking about the future. We dread chaos and long for certainty, always making sure everything goes as planned, yet fall short when confronted with the unexpected. I hope this will happen, I hope that will happen. A self-destructing habit, anticipating imaginary events to occur, moreover as expected. Let go of your longing to control the unfamiliar. You can't micromanage everything. You can't even manage your emotions most of the time, let alone future happenings. Basically, acclimate yourself to moving with the chaos that presents itself to you. Randomness is a core element in life. You don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, and you shouldn't know. Most of the time, nothing in life goes as planned. The second you desensitize yourself to uncertainty, nothing unforeseen will face you. Good or bad happenings, everything is part of the plan. And the plan is uncertain.